All right. For the sake of time and your guys' time and everything else, we're going to go ahead and get started at seven for these meetings. Um, I'd like to welcome you all and thank you for joining us for our initial um, education series meeting. Um, um, my name is Angie Bazal. I'm the vice president for Minnesota USA Wrestling, in case some of you don't know who I am. Um, this idea came to fruition um, kind of throughout the past year and, and noticing that some of the, there's a lot of the same questions that everybody has and how can we really um, get out there in front of our membership and connect um, your, ourselves to each other and for you to get to know us a little bit better. And so this kind of came as a great way to do all of that. And so we're really excited to offer these monthly meetings. Um, the first one obviously being in regards to coaching as we begin to kick off the season. Um, as you guys saw when you logged in, the, um, the education meeting tonight is going to be recorded so that we can use it for future use. Um, and then, so I thought maybe we could start with introductions. I'm happy to see that everybody has their names up already, but maybe just go through um, and say who you are, if you're associated with a club and you coach for a club, or if you're a parent and looking at for more information about coaching, um, just give a little background about that and we'll make it just quick and simple, but if you want to unmute yourselves. Um, Hudson, do you mind starting? Uh, my name is Hudson Mann from International Falls, Minnesota. I am a freestyle and Greco as well as folk style official and looking forward to being well educated in this upcoming season. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Katie. Hi, I am from Jackson, Minnesota, and I am a secretary on our board for Flat Earth Wrestling Club. So just trying to get more information for our club. Great. Welcome. Marty. Hi, everyone. Marty Morgan, longtime wrestling coach, and I help with uh, a youth club up in Mounds View. Been doing it for a long time, and just trying to follow along with what uh, the next phase of Minnesota USA wrestling is going to look like, and help out if there's any way I can. Very cool. Thanks. Thank you, Justin. I coach with uh, Centennial Youth Wrestling, youth director for the program. Um, been with them for four or five years. Okay, great. Thanks for being here, Corey. Yep, my name is Corey Plague, and I am with the St. Francis Gladiators Wrestling Club. Um, currently the president with the club, just trying to get a smooth start to the season. Awesome. This is a place. Brian Fisher. Sorry, I'm trying to enjoy a little bit of supper here. That's why I'm staying hidden out the video for a little bit. I'm your state membership director, and I'm also with the Owatonna Wrestling Association. Thanks, Ryan. Dave Peterson. There he is. Uh, yeah, there I am. <laughs> yeah. I'm the president of the organization, just hanging out in the garage and flipping some burgers here. So mm, that sounds good. And then Tom, are you on? Yes, I am. Um Tom Quisley, the um Matt Officials Director for NUSA Wrestling. Been on the board for several years, and um, I'm here to answer any questions about officiating and coaches requirements. I'm sure Angie will take care of a lot of that, but I'm here for questions and hopefully give answers. Thanks, Tom. Um, I'm gonna save Matt for last since he's gonna be your, your educator this evening. Um, just wanna let you know, we're gonna keep this set pretty informal. So if you guys have any questions, just feel free to ask them. 
but we will do a question and answer at the end um, when Matt's gone through all the information he has put together for you guys. Um, go ahead, Matt, you wanna introduce yourself? Yep, uh, Matt Noss, um, State Director with Mean USA Wrestling. Um, been involved with the board for, I don't know, over 10 years. Um, and in some capacity, whether kids director or cadet director or now state director. So um, I live in Anoka, so within the Anoka Tornado Club. Um, basically tonight, what Angie's plan was to do is just discuss requirements for coaches um, for the upcoming season. Um, not much is changing from last year. Not much at all, actually. So it's gonna be very simple. Um, you know, coaches are still for going to state tournaments. Obviously, are gonna have to have their other coaching requirements of, uh, you know, when you go in to get your membership card, you know, you're gonna be having to either do your background check um, at that time, or if you did it last year, it's an every two year deal. Um, if you did it last year, then you won't have to do it this year. But if you did, you know, expect to wait, you know, probably about 14 days to get that cleared and get that ran through. Um, but during that time of getting the background check or waiting on that, if that's the case, you can get your safe sport refresher done this year. Um, once we've done three refresher courses, something we've learned through safe sport now is that once you've done your third refreshing fresher course, you'll be redoing the beginning course over again, and then kind of just progressing back through the refreshers years to come after that. So if you did it, the first year safe sport was out, um, which I believe was four years ago, you will be doing the, the beginning part over again next year. So you'll be doing refresher three this year and then being, you know, after that. So, um, you know, so you'll be able to get the, the safe sport done while you're waiting for your background check. You, your background check comes back and you're all good to go. You can then purchase your card at that point. Um, now, one question that's come up a lot lately is, well, what about my coaching certification? you know, certifications. Um, I want to get my copper, my bronze. I want to get that done before, you know, while I'm waiting for my background check. And you can't, you just can't do that. You can't go through the courses without the, without an active membership card. So once you have your wrestling leader card, you can do that. Um, we're still going to require a copper certification at state tournaments um, as a minimum. So Bronze obviously is above that with bronze, copper, silver, and then gold. Um, in our state, we think we have one gold coach, which is Dan Chandler. And now um, the Gophers uh, Wrestling Club's coach, he's uh, silver. So I think that's, I think we have one silver, one gold. So Steiner's got a silver. So, um, can you explain, Matt, can you explain those different yep. levels and what they Yeah, basically your, your copper certification is going to be your, your your younger kids. Um, when you go to national tournaments, stuff like that, you probably need copper certification to get on the floor. Um, once you start getting into basically cadets and juniors, you're going to need bronze level or above at any regional or national events to be able to coach those guys. Now, like I said, at our state tournaments, it's copper is at a, is a, a minimum requirement for that. Um, but the, you know, with each level, copper certification is done. And if you don't have any certification done, you want to get your bronze, you don't have to do copper to do bronze. You just do bronze and you're, and you're set and ready to go. Yeah, I think the course is about four to six hours long. Um, you can do it online. Um, if, and if people decide to go above that, like going into silver, you have to, I believe with silver, you have to have your copper and bronze both done before you can go do silver. And that's more of an in-person course. And I think they do it maybe once or twice a year. No, well, this year it was in, Corville, Iowa during uh, uh, team trials, I believe, down there, if I remember right. So, um, obviously, in Minnesota also, we have the concussion state law. Man, so I my, interrupt you. Was, yep. Who would need a silver? Like, what level? Uh, most coaches are not like, going to need a silver. Like that. Yeah, most, most people are... I mean, a silver level is, you're, you're, I guess you're more, more educated than a bronze level. Um, and it's going to be more of your, your, uh, you know, your world team type coaches would be, would be a, you know, to be a, I believe to be a world team leader and maybe, you know, maybe Marty might have a better put on point on that or Tom, 
but I believe yes. just, you know. If you're going to coach overseas and represent yeah. USA Wrestling overseas, you will need a silver certification. And you will need the bronze certification for any regional or national level tournament. Even if it's, even if you're coaching little kids, if you can want to get on the floor at a regional national, you're going to need the bronze certification. Thank you guys. Um, so then, uh, yeah, like I was saying with the concussion training, obviously that, that's a requirement. So having your um, heads up concussion training, which you can do right through the USA system. Um, this is always a, a question at the state tournaments. Um, well, what if I'm a high school coach? I did it through the high school league. Awesome. Print out your sheet, bring it with you to the state tournament that you have it completed. Or you can just do it on the USA wrestling system, do a heads up concussion training on there, no charge. And it automatically gets added to your card, automatically gets added to your membership in the system. And it's done in there. Um, but if you are doing it through another outside, you know, company or outside program, Always make sure to have a copy of that with you when you go to a, a you know to a state tournament. So um, that is only Minnesota required. So anybody that comes out of state into Minnesota and coaching youth athletics need to have that done. Obviously, if you leave Minnesota, you go to Iowa to coach. They're not. That's nothing down there. It doesn't mean anything down there. So I've had people ask me in Iowa like, why do you have CT on your card? And that you, then you have to sit there and explain it to them. Um. Another thing that, you know, um, comes up every year during freestyle Greco season are, are athletes or high school athletes and college athletes that want to, you know, coach freestyle Greco. Um, they ha then they have their athlete card. Say they're, you know, they're using a, a gopher wrestler, an Augsburg wrestler, St. Cloud wrestler, whatever, and they want to coach you know, youth wrestling and they're, but they're competing at, you know, UWW events. So they have their USA wrestling athlete card. They still have to get a wrestling leader card to be able to be an actual, you know, coach, you know, and not an athlete. Um, so when they come to the tournaments, if they have their athlete card, that's all they got, then they're not, they would not get permitted into our state tournaments. Um, and that even, you know, and that, so that, and that goes all the way across. Now their safe sport would transfer over because they're having to do that because they're over 18. Um, they would have to get their background check and then purchase the card. So basically it's, you know, a $60 investment for the card, $30 every other year for a background check. Um, so that, that is that, uh, you know, a lot of people sit and wait till week before or three days before the state tournaments, the folk style state tournament, even to get decide to get their card at that point. Um, I would really be stressing to your clubs, get it sooner than later. Like the benefits of you guys having people in your club, having their card earlier than later is they don't, you don't have to worry about, do they get, you know, do they get their card or not? Do we get calls asking, oh, can we make a special exemption for so-and-so so that he could get into the tournament or she can get in the tournament. Um, the reality is, is when you're, you have your card, I, so I have my card right now, every qualifier I go to the rest of this year or this whole season, I get into those qualifiers at no charge, show my card in the door. So if you're paying seven bucks at a tournament for admission and you go to five of those tournaments, that's $35. If you buy the card now that comes off the cost of that card right away. So, um, it's actually pretty beneficial in that fact, especially with someone's parents, Myself included back in the day, I mean, going to multiple tournaments every, you know, weekend, I guess, or all year long, you know, it was one of those things that became a perk that I just didn't, you know, show them the card and went in. So a lot of people don't know that until usually at the end of the year or never know that. So um, that's one thing we're going to be having all the flyers, but, you know, stress to your parents, your club leaders, you know, your coaches, stuff like that, that that is what you definitely want to do is get it sooner than later. Now you don't have to worry about the headaches at the end. And I can already tell you the one thing will be as well. I don't know if we're going to be qualified to go to state, but, and I, and I can understand that concern coming from a parent, but when you get, you know, why deal with the headache at the end? Um, make sure you're covered, make sure you can use it at your tournaments as you go up throughout the year. 
you know, kind of takes care of that. So um trying to think if there's anything uh else. I kind of condense a lot of that, I know, down into a short amount of time. So if there are any questions at this point, um I definitely would take them. Matt, can you talk about the North Star and the requirements there? Yeah, for the North Star tournament, if any of you guys are aware or not aware or whatever, we sent out quite a few things about it. But the North Star tournament's a new, you know, we're trying to build this up as a regional national chase style tournament. Um, we didn't have it last year because of just low numbers. Um, and we're hoping that changes. I mean, we had, I think it was four or five states um, that were signed up for the tournament last year with the low numbers we still we already had at that point too so um that's gonna be october 22nd for the 14 u's and under and then uh 23rd is going to be the girls k through sixth grade um age group girls high school and boys high school um boys high school numbers are starting to come around we got looking like there's about 16 kids i think registered for that right now which i think is going to be awesome but for that it's going to be you know, you'll have to have, if you have your USA wrestling card, and have all your stuff done. It's $10, get admission for both days. So it's, um, so that'll, uh, you know, that is an, an option to get it early at that point too. So, but it'll be the same as our state tournament. Would be. For the coaching cards. Yep. So yep. they will be required for the North Star. Correct. Tournament. Yep. Um. You know, a lot of people have already reached out to me and asked, do I need to get my coaching credentials to coach? And the answer really is yes. Um, will you have the ability to be Matt side? Yes. Will you have the ability to interact with the referees or the table workers? Absolutely not. Not with all those coaches credentials done. So, you know, that might be a, a, a good reason to just get it done and get it started. Um, and have it ready for the season. Um, Cause hopefully this preseason tournament um, takes off and it gets bigger every year. So kind of like this class, you know, this is, you got to start somewhere and I'm glad you guys are here to um, participate tonight. And we hope it continues to grow as we offer more different, you know, more topics. So does anybody have any other questions about coaching requirements? For Minnesota USA Wrestling. I have one quick question. Is the bronze level at regionals, is that new this year? So, I was waiting for Tom. So I'm I'm not sure if that is a change. I that I'm not so, aware of. Okay, Corey, I think I can answer your question. Sure. So when we talk coaching requirements for regionals, we're talking like Northern Plains. Okay. Like on the national level regionals. Got it, okay. So our local regionals at this point in time, we do not require that coaching requirement. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Yes, I was, I was only referring to Northern Plains and that type of tournament, not our regional folk style tournaments. Perfect, thanks. A good question, yeah. What do you guys see as what's the difficult in getting either your coaches to do it or other, you know, obviously some of you have been around a long time. What are some of the um, roadblocks into getting their coaches cards, do you think? The time, just setting aside the time to do get it done is what I hear, but. I can honestly tell you that's not something that we have struggled with. Oh, good. Like our coaches, they, it's last minute before season starts, but they all get it done. So it hasn't really been too much of an issue. And I don't have much involvement in what level. Okay. So. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd say it's just procrastination and just got to give a deadline and then they'll finally get to it. But. Until it's that deadline, they're not going to do it. Right. 
Okay. Do you guys have any ideas of what other things you would like us to put out there? What else do you want to learn about, hear about, talk about? And so it doesn't even have to be, you know, exact subject, maybe just a Q&A about something. Any ideas or? Hudson, anything on the officials front that you would see that would be helpful? Not at the moment, just really emphasize the coaches that need the requirements to be able to talk to the officials and table workers, as well as emphasize being respectful, approaching us in a respectful way. That's pretty much all I got. Perfect. If you think of anything, shoot me a message. I'm sure that everybody's heard this about a billion times from me, but the, the recruitment of officials has to fall back on the club leaders somewhat. And, and then the training becomes my job and, and the other officials job. Um, I felt like in the last couple of years, people think, well, it's, you're the officials director, you find the, co you find the officials that ain't working. So, you know, anybody who's the club leader should be looking at two or three parents and <laughs> asking them to at least get a little bit of training from me, which I'll be offering. And I'm talking basically freestyle Greco, um, offering a little bit later in the year and then try it. If you have your wrestling leaders card, you are registered as an official also. You don't need to do anything more as far as the membership to, to be an official. You just need to take the, the leap into becoming an official and stepping on the mat. What, just cause you brought it up, Tom, what are the steps to becoming an official? Well, if you're doing the Freestyle Greco, the USA Wrestling card is what you need. Uh, there's a box that you can check um, as you do your membership and renew your membership to become an official. But if you contact me, I'll put you on a, an email list that I'm going to be working with uh, a number of people in, in um, probably December, first part of January into getting some training for the um, Freestyle Greco officials. If you want to become a folk style official, um, you can do that with us, but to be a uh, um, a, a high school official to do high school junior high matches you have to become a registered official with the Minnesota State High School League um, but that doesn't mean that you can't become a USA wrestling official and do some of our USA tournaments but if you're looking at making some money which is you can make some decent money um, officiating high school and junior high and um, but that that's through the Minnesota State High School League. If anybody's interested in doing that, I can sure help through that. Oh. <laughs> we think we lost you there for a minute, Tom. <clears throat> Where'd you lose me? About where to register. Well, registering uh, for MenUSA, you just register as a wrestling leader. leader. If you're registering for the Minnesota State High School League, there is an officials tab on that. It's a little bit daunting, but if you want some help with it or are really interested in it, uh, just give me a call or get, drop me an email and I'll give you a call and I can help you through that process. Yeah, there's a few hoops to jump through there and I don't think it's the clearest thing um, on the State High School League website, but... Um, I can help you through it. Perfect. And Ryan would be more than happy to help any of your coaches if they run into any stumbling blocks and getting their stuff done too. Right, Ryan? Yeah, you can shoot me a phone call or an email um, either way. Okay. Well, if nobody has any more questions, this is a quick one, we'll wrap up. I do wanna tell you our October, education series is going to be an awesome one. So Jeff Jones, he's our national pairing director from USA Wrestling, is again going to be um, meeting with us um, on how to run track wrestling tournaments. So if you or a club member or somebody in your community 
or whoever you think needs to know or hear or jump in on this training. Um, we posted it on Facebook and we've sent out emails if you can forward that information to them or you can just give them my email. Um, it's abazal at mnusawrestling.org. And then I can get them, there's a great manual that he's put together. And then we're gonna be going through that over Zoom on October 12th at seven. So, and then once we get the rest of the season's education info put together, we'll get that out to you guys so you can save those dates too. But thanks again for jumping on tonight. Um, we appreciate participation and your membership with Minnesota USA Wrestling. Um, and as always, we are your support. So reach out if you need us. Good, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks.